God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I am so excited today. Why? I'm talking about my one of my favorite, favorite, ultimate favorite subjects, end times. I'm fascinated by it. Amen. Why? Because it's very, very relevant today. Amen. 80 years ago, when people preached the gospel, they looked through a, a small little window into the prophetic, into the into, into prophecies. But today, my brother, we're not looking through a, a small little hole in the wall. We're looking through a massive, massive portal, praise the Lord, into the prophetic. My name is Pastor Luis Santiago. By the grace of God, I am the pastor of Path of Light Christian Church in Mineola, Florida. We're located at 303 Highway 27 here in Mineola. Our, safe, our service uh, schedule are Wednesday nights at 7.30. We have a healing and we have a deliverance service. Deliverance and healing. Oh, that, that's what we need, right? Deliverance and healing. Praise the Lord. And Sunday, we have service at 11 o'clock in the morning. If you don't have a church, if you don't have a place to go, but you desire to go somewhere, Come to Mineola if you're in Orlando, if you're in Kissimmee, if you are in Lisburg, if you're in the area. Praise the Lord. We're here. Praise the Lord. Don't forget, God's heart towards the church is for us to congregate. Praise the Lord. Congregate. There's nothing like coming to the house of God. We're, we're doing these videos, and this is good. I like it. But... Do not neglect the assembly of the saints, okay? Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, end times. I love it. Why I love it? Because I know my Messiah is coming soon. I know my Jesus is about to arrive. Why? When I turn the television, when, when I... When I go to, to my social, uh, with the social media, to the outlets, is crying, is, is, is telling, is telling the whole world, Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord. So how do we know he's coming? Last week, remember we talked a little bit about, um, the three uh, main, uh, things that composed the great tribulation prophesied by Daniel. Man, we said that uh, first, number one, amen, the nations will be at war. That you could do check, right? Check. Second, the accuser of the brethren will be cast down to, 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 to this world. And the Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of the, of the world and the sea and the ocean. Because the accuser of the brethren is coming with great wrath. He's angry. He's mad. Why? And he should be. <laughs> he should be mad. He has all the reasons in the world to show to that sh uh, should be mad because he's got nothing but a very very short time before he's apprehended and and unbound for a thousand years. I cannot wait. Praise the Lord. And then at the same time, Jesus Christ is pouring out his judgments upon the earth. Praise the Lord Jesus. Three major storms at the same time. But look, uh, last week we were talking about uh, Luke 21, verse 25, all the way to uh, uh, 27. But look what verse 28 says. We read the Bible in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look what verse 28 of Luke 21 says. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draw, draws nigh or draws near. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now what it says, when you see these things happening in one generation, huh? then, then you got to say what? Huh? Look up. Then you're going to have to say, wow, it looks a lot like the words of Jesus in Matthew 24 and in Luke 21. Praise the Lord. So, and we bring these messages not to scare you out. My purpose is not to spook you out. 
with doom and gloom. What my purpose and God's heart. That's why he put it in the Bible. That's why he, that, that, that's why he spent so, so much in it. To warn you for, you, for us to be prepared and aware that he's coming soon. Praise the Lord. When these things happen in one generation, then look up. Why look up? Why look up? Because you can look to the side, to your neighbor, or to the government, or, or to your family, or to, 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 to anybody to save you. Ain't nobody be able to save you. That's why you have to look up. Because when you look up, you're looking at him. He's the only one who's able to save you. And he purchased it 2,000 years ago. Look how wonderful the word of God is. That we're looking to the future, but in the past, 2,000 years ago, he already paid for your chance of salvation, your redemption. Now, look, people say, okay, uh, last week, Pastor, you talk about signs in the heaven, the sun, the moon, and the star. When the when the sun gets darkened and the moon don't give his light, but we haven't seen that yet. But today, I want to give you one of the greatest signs signs of the twentieth century. Praise the Lord! The, the sign that 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 people were looking for. To know that we are in that generation, in that time frame. And it's from uh, Luke 21. We're going to stay in the, in the same chapter, verse 29. And look what it says. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding. Praise the Lord. You see and know for yourselves that the summer is near. It means that it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Praise the Lord. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. I surely, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things Will take place. Wow. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the living God. Look. If you have spent some time studying the word of God. And studying symbolism. You know that the fig tree. Fig tree. Had to do with the nation of Israel. The Bible says, hallelujah, if you look at the prophet, at the prophet Hosea chapter 9 verse 10, if you look at Jeremiah 24, if you look at Jeremiah 8, 13, they prophesied and they said that Israel, Israel, the, the fig tree typified Israel, the nation of Israel, praise the Lord, the nation of Israel. Is compared in the Bible as a fig tree. And the Bible says that when Israel come back to the land, praise the Lord, by the prophet Isaiah, when Israel will come back to the land where the Lord has scattered them through all the nations of this world. And you know that happened. You know that happened. In the 70th year after Jesus was crucified, praise the Lord. You know what happened? Israel, uh, Jerusalem was totally destroyed. The Jewish people scattered for 2,000 years. Scattered across the nations of the world. Many in Russia. Many in, 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 in North and South America. All over the world. But the Bible says... The prophet says that Israel will come back to the land. But for Israel, for, 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 the, for the Jews to come back to the land, they need to have a land. 
They need to be a nation. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the prophetic. The Bible said that Israel need to be in their homeland as a sovereign nation. And if you look at Isaiah chapter 66, the Bible says to the prophet Isaiah, can a nation be born in one day? Can a nation be born in one day? You know that is humanly impossible. A nation, a sovereign nation, established nation, cannot come forth, not even in one day, not even in a week, not even in a year. Only with the supernatural intervention of the God of heaven, of the God of Isaac, hallelujah, Jacob, uh, Israel was what? Come back to life. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the one doing it. And when God does something, when God says something in his word, he'll, he'll bring it to pass. The world, you know, was astonished. Astonished. When in, in May 14, 1948, the proclamation was given. In one day, as the prophet foretold, in one day, Israel became a sovereign nation recognized by the world leaders of this world, including America, France, England. Praise the Lord. Fulfilling the prophecy that Jesus said, when you see the fig tree, that his, his, his leaves uh, begin to appear. Then you know that summer is near. The Messiah is near. My beloved, Israel becoming a nation was one of the biggest signs, vis vis uh, visible signs, tangible signs. The Messiah is about to arrive. That Jesus is coming. But not only that. Jerusalem needed to be the, the sovereign capital of Israel. What a wonderful news. When President Trump. Hallelujah. Moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And declared Jerusalem the sovereign capital of the Jewish state. What a wonderful, wonderful fulfillment of prophecy. And then you know, the Bible says, then you know, amen. Assuredly, I say to you that this generation by no means pass away till all these things will take place. Heaven and earth will pass away. Verse 33, but my words will not, by no means, will not pass away. What does it mean? I don't care what newspapers say. I don't care what social media says. I don't care what government says. I don't care what world leaders say. The only thing I care about is what heaven had to say. Through the word of God, through the Bible, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, the word of God, by no means will never pass away. Everything will cease to exist. Everything will come and go, but this word will not pass away. And you know what this word says for you? This, this word says to you, you could have eternity with Christ. You could have a better life here on earth and the hope of eternity with Jesus. The assurance of eternity with the Lord. So what do you say? Why are you postponing it? Why are you putting it off? Why are you turning the other way? When you know that everything screams out, oh, Jesus is coming. When you know that the, that every, 
accomplished. Everything is almost fulfilled. Amen. Since 1948, 1948 marked the year. One of the biggest prophecies in the Bible took place. Fulfilled to the T. To me, that's enough, enough information to bring me to my knees and to cl cleanse and clean my life because my king is coming and I want to be ready to receive him. Wouldn't you want to be ready to receive the king of kings? Or you will face him like many people will face him unprepared because they neglected every opportunity that the Lord has given them for salvation. Don't be one of those people. Don't be one of those people. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. The world screams. The world, even the earth is in travail. Saying to you, Jesus is coming. So don't neglect the signs. But you say to me, Pastor, uh, I know things are happening in the world. I know, I know, that I know. I don't have the answers, many people say. But I'm telling you in, in, in His Word, there is the answer for everything that has to do with your life and eternity. There is the solution for your problem. All you have to do is open your heart to Jesus Christ. You say, but I don't know how to do that, Pastor. I'll show you how to do that. Because I had to do it at one point in my life. I had to do it. I had to, I had to have total surrender to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and not just because I want to escape uh, uh, and I want I, 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 I want to escape hell and damnation. No. Yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Because I love him. Why I love God? Because he loves me first. He showed it to me on Calvary. He demonstrated his love when he died for my sins. That I don't have to face doom and gloom. I don't have to face it. Because he died on the cross. Now I have life. And he wants you to have that life. So repeat after me. Right where you're at. Say Jesus. I heard your word. If, if, if Pastor Lewis is right. And, and the world is, 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 is destined to, 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 for judgment. I don't want to be part of that. I want, uh, I want to accept you into my heart. I want to, I want to, uh, I want to invite you into my heart. Please, Lord, save me. Please, Lord, cleanse me. I know I have sinned. I know I have messed up. I know I have lived a life away from you. But now I see. Not just through the Bible, but through 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 television, through through computers, through 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 uh, all the outlets out there is saying the same thing that you are coming. I don't want to be left out. I don't want to be left behind. Lord, I turn from my sins. I repent from my sins. Please, Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Come into my life and transform me. Change me into the person that you created me to be. And write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, you have nothing to worry about. But you need to have the information. You need to have the information. You need to be able to share it and explain it to other people that don't know. That's why we bring it to you. Praise the Lord. Now, if you don't have a church, if you don't have a congregation, look, it, I, I don't, 
I had to stress it. I had to say it. Many people after COVID, many and before COVID, you know, and, and they stay home. They don't go to a church. They don't go to a congregation. And they, they have all kinds of excuses. But one day we're going to face a God that we will not have any excuse. The Bible says you need to congregate. You need to be part of a, a church, a body, a, a body that teaches the word of God, help you grow into your walk with Jesus. But if you don't have a place, I invite you to our church. 303 Highway 27 in Mignola, Florida. Come, come and be part of us. And let's take, let's take the world for Christ. Praise the Lord. And if you would like to donate to our ministry to help us uh, further the kingdom of God, to preach the gospel, to go to the nations, I'll show you ways that you are able to donate. But now, thank you very much. And God bless you. Until next time, God bless you.